Hello again, fellow reef keepers. Welcome back to Craft Aquatic. I'm Matt G. Now there's something going on with the 120 gallon mixed reef that I've intentionally not mentioned, and I think you may be very interested in hearing about it. Close to a year back, I decided to begin the process of upgrading my main LED lighting to a setup that I'd run for the next five years or so. Instead of simply replacing both of the Viper Spectra black boxes at once, I thought it might be a bit more interesting to run a high-end LED alongside a budget LED to to observe the differences in their performance. Well, it's now been an entire year that I've been running a high-end $630 LED fixture right next to one of the most popular $130 black box LEDs. Want to see how they compared? Stay tuned and I'll show you. Our 120 gallon mixed reef aquarium has been set up for three years and for the majority of the time it has been illuminated by two Viper Spectra 165 watt LED fixtures. I purchased the first fixture as an experiment to replace an ATI Sun Power, which is a T5 fluorescent tube based lighting system that was over our 34 gallon reef tank at the time. The black box LED worked out great so I had no issue with installing two of them over our 120 gallon SBS dominated display tank. In fact, much much of the coral you are seeing here was grown off from 3 quarter inch frags under the Viper Spectra black box LEDs. When I swapped the left fixture out, I decided to replace it with an AI Hydra 64 HD. My very first high end LED fixture was this AI Soul Blue, which I still run today. They are one of the original reef aquarium LED manufacturers, so there is a good reason to choose one as a long term lighting solution over a tank full of expensive and sensitive coral. Being that this is a mixed reef, getting the light perfect is critical, especially as the tank matures, which is why I am changing some things now as I reach the three year mark. We'll discuss that later, but let's first talk a bit about how the Viper Spectra and AI Hydra compared. Here's some footage I found where I unboxed the new AI Hydra 64 HD, and I have to say that the packaging was not that great. The cheaper light was packaged in a superior way, especially when it came to protective padding. Both lights are suspended from a central brace, but you'll notice that the Viper Spectra was hung a few inches lower due to the fact that it was originally installed when all of the coral in this tank were tiny frags, at least a foot below the water surface. I thought I would need the added light penetration at the time, but now know that this fixture can absolutely be hung much higher. In fact, 12 inches is probably a good start given the power and tight optics, which are not necessarily a great thing as we will discuss later on in this video. Here I wanted to show you what it looks like with both fixtures on as well as the two 48 inch T5 bulbs that sort of make this a hybrid system. Right between the AI and black box you'll notice our trusty AI Soul Blue. The cloudiness is because I treated with coral snow so you can better observe how the light blends as it enters the water. One of the things I enjoyed was how the quality of the light between the two fixtures changes throughout the day, being that they are completely independent of each other. It's something that is rarely discussed as an option, but can add dimensionality to the coral viewing experience. In this shot you can really observe how the light from the AI Hydra blends and dances in the cloudy water. In contrast, the light from the Viper Spectra is typically very uniform and either solid blue or stark white with a hint of green. Custom color blending is possible with the AI Hydra, where it is not with the Viper Spectra. Here's another angle at which I like to view the tank, especially when the AI Hydra is ramping up and the black box is set to the blue channel. The clock in the Viper Spectra is not very accurate, so there's also typically a point where one side of the tank is unlit. Again, I kind of enjoy the contrast and even think the fish have fun swimming in and out of the dark and light areas in the mornings and the evenings. This just goes to show that we should do our best to keep things stable, but also shouldn't be afraid to have some fun and think outside of the box. It's not always necessary to purchase new and expensive equipment if your livestock are thriving as is. With that said, I kind of like the simplicity of the black box. It's pretty simple. It keeps you from fussing around too much and stressing out your coral. You have two options, on and off, and the brightness level for each channel. On the other hand, the Hydra 64 is excellent for dialing in the exact color you want, and it doesn't waste any resources doing so, since it will redistribute the power to whatever color channel you wish. 
The Viper Spectra, like most black boxes, is a handful of 5 watt LED chips on an aluminum sheet, each attached to its own 90 degree lens. You set the time on either the front panel or an included remote control, which also allows you to dial in your schedule. There are no apps, dimming features, or Wi-Fi options like on the Hydra 64, which allow you to get more granular when it comes to precise settings. Black box LEDs typically have the power transformer built in, which makes them simple to plug in, but dangerous if one were to ever come loose and fall into the water. Fortunately, the Viper Spectra came with this very easy to use solid hanging hardware, which works well with my canopy configuration. The Hydra 64 has two mounting points on the top that can accommodate a variety of configurations. I have simply hung it from the canopy center brace with two stainless steel bolts through washers. The AI uses a remote AC to DC inverter for its power supply. It makes cabinet mounting a bit more difficult, but allows for a much slimmer fixture with a giant heat sink on top. As mentioned, we supplement the two LED fixtures with two 48-inch T5 strips. These are horticultural units with built-in ballasts that work really well for supplemental lighting. I found the setup to be perfectly adequate up to a point. The T5 bulbs are the first step in increasing the overall footprint of the lighting system. So next I'd like to take a little time to compare power readings and similar positions on opposite sides of the tank with my FG MQ510. Keep in mind that the Viper Spectra is mounted two inches closer to the water surface. So as you may have noticed, the Hydra 64 displays better overall performance and spread. While the Viper Spectra tends to focus most of its power dead center, this likely has to do with the 90 degree optics and was not as much of an issue when this tank was full of coral frags two feet below it. If I were to continue to use this fixture, I would have to find a way to mount it at least 12 to 18 inches above the water surface. Here you can see I'm panning around the center of the tank where the two lights converge. My readings have found that the two fixtures actually blend quite nicely here, and I've yet to have any real issue when it comes to overall coral vitality anywhere in the tank with either unit. One of the points I'd really like to emphasize is flow. We are comparing these two fixtures since this is a video about low cost versus premium LED lighting, while ignoring most other parameters. Well the truth is, even distribution of flow is equally important. Here I have this Tunzi 6105 mounted on the right side of the aquarium, creating quality variable flow just a few inches away from the growth tips of this tenuous colony. This coral has grown from a frag under the Viper Spectra since it was first put in, and only really began to show its true colors once the flow was right. The most colorful frags and colonies in my system are under varying degrees of par. The one thing they all have in common is their placement in relation to adequate flow. So with that said, here are some new frags and mini colonies that have been placed around the tank. When you change lights in an established system, it is often a good time to remove some of the older colonies and replace them with SPS frags that you are looking to grow into colonies. Older established colonies sort of grow into the conditions they become used to and are a lot more sensitive to changes in flow, lighting, and certain parameters. Here if you look closely upper middle of the shot, you'll see a dancing area of focus green light. Those 90 degree optics on the black box LEDs have one last drawback. They can create areas of intense focused color since they tend not to blend as well as the optics of the premium LED lights. I've noticed the green tends to really stand out. I've yet to experience any negative effects of focus light on overall coral health, but it is something that does not happen with the Hydra 64 and is definitely a plus when it comes to more expensive reef lights. So overall I leave the final verdict up to you the viewer which do you prefer black box or premium lighting one last point I'd like to address here at the three-year mark has more to do with mature SPS colony shading than it has to do with the actual primary lights that I am using you'll notice some areas under these colonies that are losing polyps due to lack of light 
Now that I've scratched the itch actively comparing my black box LED to my new Hydra 64 HD, I've concluded that I need to raise the Viper Spectre substantially for it to continue to be effective, so I'll be adding a second Hydra 64 HD to this system. Here's the newest one having its Wi-Fi tested before adding it to the display. The old Viper Spectre will be moved downstairs to the frag system where I can easily raise it up to 18 inches. And as far as my issue with shading is concerned, here in this cardboard tube I've ordered two 48 inch LED strips, one all blue and one is a mix of colors. I'll put links to all of the equipment I used in the description below. Here I've mounted them to some wood brackets along with the T5 fixtures. There's a little more room for two more strips if it turns out I need more coverage. Mature SBS colonies really require light coverage as wide and deep as the entire footprint of the aquarium. With the two AI Hydra HDs, I'll get more even distribution of light throughout and the T5 and LED strips will serve to angle the light down toward the underside of the rock structure, especially with the 90 degree optics and handy brackets that were included with the LED strips. I fragged some of the larger colonies, removed some repeats, and added some high-end SPS and LPS frags to grow out under the upgraded lighting system. The black box LEDs did a great job getting this mixed reef to the point it's at today, and hopefully the Hydra 64 HDs and upgraded strips will help to carry this reef to the 5 year mark and beyond. So that about wraps up this video. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you have not already. There are dozens of informative and interesting videos to check out on the Craft Aquatic channel and some interesting topics in the works. Enjoy this time lapse of sunset on the reef and I'll see you next time.